Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to talk about the decline of Ubuntu. And this is something uh, I want to like Ubuntu. It is the Fourier many of us had into the Linux world. But in the last, I mean, ever since 16, I think was their peak. After 16, it started going down and down and down and down in quality. And a lot of this is because what they're doing is they're they're basing their release on a date rather than when it's done. Many distributions say, okay, when it's done, we will release it. Ubuntu is like, no, this is the release date. And if it's not done, and that's what we're seeing. So the new Ubuntu 2110 came out last week, and I had full intentions of reviewing it right at the time it came out. The unfortunate thing is that I could not get it to work. Um, part of this is, of course, I was still running on the older build, which was the Linux Mint 18.3, which is officially end of life. And I've had a few different distributions that have had issues, but progressively over the last few, um, over the last few, I'd say several months, maybe a few distributions have had a few problems booting up and I still worked around it quite a bit. But eventually it got to the point where it's like, okay, I need to get this updated into the latest version of VirtualBox here and so that more distributions can run. So I can go back and have a look at Void Linux. That was the problem when I tried to run Void, I don't know, almost two years ago now. That was the problem. It was They said, hey, yeah, it's probably the version of VirtualBox may not be working. So I'll go back and have a look at Void again. Why not? Um, uh, I, I, the latest also, I want to do a full comprehensive video on uh, first steps after installing MX Linux, and I will still do that video. But again, I could not get the MX Linux. Like, the distros would they would boot under live you could install it but you couldn't ever get to the login screen so ubuntu would ha get on the login screen and it would lag mx linux would do the same thing so it's this this trend and that was my virtual machine so i've upgraded the entire computer we're in the latest version of linux mint with the latest virtual box i went ahead and installed uh, ubuntu and it installs and you can log in Unfortunately, there are a lot of problems that I found with Ubuntu. Now, not everybody has had these problems, and I appreciate the honest reviews, like DT's review, where uh, DistroTube's review, where he's looking at pointing out some of the legitimate problems. And some of those problems I've seen, and some of those I've had different problems. Now, what my experience was is not everybody's experience. Some people are booting up and going, wow, this works great. But we can't forget the fundamental principle. One of the things Ubuntu is doing and Canonical's approach is kind of become more corporate. They want to become a distribution for the big companies that are doing a lot of uh, a lot of different things. And so with this, they're pushing things like snaps everywhere. Like Firefox is a snap. Now, in the next version of Ubuntu, Firefox, when you install it, even via the apt command, will install the snap. It's not doing that yet. You can still install the Firefox from the repository. And it's the same version, but they're pushing the snap version on you when you first install. And it's slower and it's buggier. And I've had problems on the snap store as well. And uh, I'll boot it up and then I'll just basically get a blank page. And then after a while, I booted it up and then I got editor's picks, but nothing else would show up at all. And so it looks like it's a very lacking software store. And this is one of the points that DistroTube made in his, uh, in his video is to boot this up after install and you don't see any software, it really is a huge turnoff. Now, for me, the last point, the, the reason I decided this is not going to be a distro review and more of a Ubuntu is declining is because when I got it installed and I finally got it installed without doing updates because I have very limited bandwidth I can use. I can't continuously attempt to reinstall Ubuntu. So I finally got it installed by installing it without installing updates on the install. So then let's go ahead and push the updates. Well, the updates are crashing. They're not able to update. And I tried it both the terminal and in the GUI system. I tried the GUI system first, and then it lagged for 20 minutes. I let it sit for 20 minutes. It's like not doing anything. So I had to go back through. I had to clear out dpackage. I had to fix uh, app fix broken install. 
and then it tries to fix it. It's one of the Linux kernel. Literally, the Linux kernel it wants to update to is broken and not updating. It's lagging and freezing out at 7%. And then, basically, I can't do a whole lot more with the system. So let's walk through some of the issues. Of course, on the positive, of course, is Ubuntu has a big name. It leads people into Linux. Unfortunately, it's become such a bad and bloated operating system. It is a very, very poor introduction introduction to Linux. I would not recommend using Ubuntu if you are looking to switch over Linux. The unfortunate thing is it is the most popular by name. And so when you're looking up Linux, you're going to get Ubuntu more often. And then you install it and you think Linux is crap because Ubuntu is turning into garbage. Version 16 of Ubuntu was awesome. 17, it started to go downhill. And then around 18 and 19, it started pulling up this snowball of stupid insanity. And we get 2021 here and I can't even use the thing functionally. Now, maybe if I try and put it on real hardware and I can try and do that, that's fine. And some people make that argument. But the fact of the matter is more often than not, Linux distributions are tested in virtualized environments. And if they don't work properly in virtualized environments, that's kind of a problem. So let's walk through a few of the issues that I found. Well, one of the things is I thought, well, it's not booting in right. So let's go ahead and have a look, a brief look at the drivers because you can install different drivers. You boot up. What's it trying to install? It's trying to install proprietary drivers for VMware. I'm not on VMware Ubuntu. I'm on VirtualBox. So Ubuntu apparently is confusing VMware from VirtualBox, which have a completely different subset of properties, and that might be part of the problem. That I have to get all the VMware crap off that's trying to automatically install your, your virtualization. Let's install VM stuff. No doubt the result of a diversity hire. I'm telling you, people. I'm telling you. The competency has left the room, and we are hiring people based on who they go to bed with instead. And that should not be done. And to be fair, I don't know if Canonical is involved in all that kind of stuff or not. Um, it just kind of makes sense because I know that GNOME is, and you know, they are using GNOME, so maybe that's the case. Obviously, the software store, for a while, it wasn't working. After a while, I finally was able to get to the point where I could see uh, editor picks, but nothing else. I could see that there's an update to install. I could see my list of installed applications, and then I could eventually see the editor pick software, but I could not find anything else in the software store. So it looks like there's no software, or it's broken, or it's non-functional. I also did notice, this is extraordinarily minor, but one of the things that DistroTube commented on his video is pulling up the apps menu. When I first installed it, and you pull up the apps menu, they were actually all listed there in, in all the way across in what three full rows like you would expect it to uh, to see. And uh, and I believe he said and I'll echo that it could be a gnome thing. But um, what happened is after some of the updates you went through and then it changed it again. So it looked like what he had on his screen. It go. You know, a row, I think two rows, and then to a half a row of applications. And then there's another window of applications that you have to scroll over. It's like, it looks very weird and incomplete and unprofessional. In other words, Ubuntu is getting to the point where it looks like it's not even a finished operating system because it's not a finished operating system. They're being too ambitious with what they're trying to do. And they're saying, this is our release date. We got to get it out on this release date. So let's push out the release date. And then they push out the release date it doesn't work. And the first time I noticed this, I think it was like 1710, I think, was the first one where there were a lot of problems. And then there were a lot of problems in the 1804 LTS, which I think, if I remember correctly, I think Linux Mint 19 was based on the 1804 LTS. Um, I'm not remembering off the top of my head. But that caused me to not recommend to update to Linux Mint 19 until all the bugs were worked out. Now, the 2004 package base is a little bit stronger especially now that we have um, uh, we have uh, you know enough updates to it so Linux Mint 20 based on which I think is based on the 2004 I could be wrong about that but the Linux Mint 20 base is a lot better because they've worked out a lot of the bugs that Ubuntu had but the problem is Ubuntu is pushing these where are some of these coming in well some of these is their overwhelming dependence on snaps they're pushing software as snaps that don't have a business being snapped. So like, well, they'll update faster. 
Well, I got news for you. Some of us don't want our software to update faster. We don't. I don't want to boot up my computer and be like, we've updated your software and be like, oh, crap. Something may not work now and I have to work right now. And I ran into this. I pushed some updates on uh, Linux Mint. Firefox updated to the latest version and then OBS can no longer capture Firefox. Huh. Interesting. Now, I still I have keep a variety of different browsers on the computer, so I was able to switch to one that can still be captured. And here on my new Linux Mint 20. Dot, uh, what is it? 20.2 build. Yes, I do actually have the ability to capture Firefox again now that everything is updated. But it was kind of hairy there for the first couple of videos I had to record in this transitionary period because these are the things that I don't want the software to update. And with the snap method, and they're slower. They have, um, they each one of them adds, adds, uh, like mounts, a, um, um, creates a mount point on your drive, which slows the whole thing down. Of course, they are a proprietary distribution. Some people, um, are problematic with that. Some people don't care. For me, I, I'm on the fence. I don't care all that much. I don't have a complete 100% aversion to proprietary, but I prefer FOSS when I can, which is why I would prefer a, a flat packs over snaps any day or app images over snaps any day. In fact, I generally don't use, I don't think there's anything in production that I use snap at all. And so these are these things to think about that Ubuntu, it's doing weird stuff. And... As much as I want to like it, as much as I want to do a great review to say, hey, this is what's new in Ubuntu, I just can't. It took me five times to get this thing installed at all. And now that I do finally have it installed, it just isn't working right. And yes, for those in the comments, I did verify my download. Okay, so I know it's not an error in downloading, um, but after five installs and continuously getting stuck trying to unpackage Linux modules, uh, Linux header modules and stuff such like this. The software store that doesn't work very well, it's not populated. The fact it's installing wrong drivers for my virtualization software, what the hell is that about? And then the fact we're getting things like Firefox put in with a snap when the exact same version is in the repository as well. This just doesn't make any sense because Ubuntu is on the decline. Please do not recommend Ubuntu for anybody new switching to Linux. It is no longer a good distribution. There's too many bugs. They're pushing it out too much on release dates and not based upon Upon having good finished and functional software so as much as I would love to say it mm, let's stay away from it what would I recommend for new Linux Linux Mint of course is still awesome Farron OS Zorin OS if you want to go on the arch end um, Endeavor OS is what I'm using on my media PC and um, Manjaro those are all really good uh, Solace is pretty good um, so you have uh, you have options that are not Ubuntu. And so when you talk to people about switching to Linux, I would probably steer them away from Ubuntu. There's just becoming too many bugs. And while there are a lot of positive videos promoting it, you have to realize there's a lot of people that will just get out there and be like, oh, it's so amazing, and all this, and overlook all the little bugs. That can come back and bite you. And I have a little story about why. Um, as the last apartment I had in State College, I go in and I'm taking, I, I take very good HD videos of the whole place every time I move in and move out. As I was moving in, it was a disaster area. Literally, they had half the floors pulled up. They had not cleaned the apartment. There was actually the previous owner's inch thick cat fur on the edges of the steps. It was disgusting. It was absolutely disgusting. And... I went in there and I'm actually capturing all of this stuff on the video. So you can see it. You can make the argument. But I was kind of overlooking all these like, oh, I was trying to make excuses. Oh, well, that's whatever. But but look at how all this big space and whatever else. The fact of the matter is when it goes to move out, they're trying to screw me on portions of the security deposit. Now, fortunately, I had the videos where I was able to go in and say, hey, yeah, you need to give me more money back here. And uh, they did. They eventually did. And uh, they're like, well, nobody has videos. I, I do. Oh, really? Uh, click and write me another check. Um, the point is, I was overlooking the bad things over excitement of a new apartment. You do not want to overlook all the bad things in the excitement of new Linux distribution because if you're, the, if you're seeing Linux for the very first time on that very first impression and you're overlooking it, 
guess what? You are just excitingly steering somebody to something that those bugs, they're going to intensify in them. And they'll be like, Linux sucks. And Linux doesn't suck. It's just Ubuntu has started to decline. Don't recommend Ubuntu at this point in time. Uh, they've they've gone off the rails. Stuff's not working. I, I, I just, and I just, I don't know why. I don't understand. But that's the case. Anyway, um, I was hoping to make a more positive video. I wanted to do a, a at least a balanced distro review. Um, other than the little screenshots you have in here uh, from my, uh, my first boot up of this. Um, uh, uh, I want to be more positive, but I can't. I can't. Sorry. Well, anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know other distributions I should have a look at um, and uh, give the honest review, which I will point out the good. I will point out the bad. Obviously, there are some positives in Ubuntu, but uh, overwhelmingly, it's the negatives are keeping me away. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.